How you doing good people? This is the 8-Bit Animal and we are in the last few days of the year of the animal. Um, and today we're going to talk about a game that has a really really interesting distinction. Um, it's probably one of the few rental store exclusives on this list though there are people who contend that it wasn't a rental store exclusive that it did get a retail release. I didn't see this in Walmart though, good boy. So miss me with that. Um, but this game does prove a point to me that late NES life cycle Taito really did just churn out nothing but grails. And it was partially because of their their small runs of cartridge releases and stuff like that. But these and and the quality of their games, cause yeah, the games were being sold in small batches, but they were really good video games, really good quality games. And this is an example of one of them. And boy, oh boy, this resale price is nuts. But enough of my talking. Let's go and get into this right quick. Today, we're gonna take a quick look at the Flintstones, the surprise at Dinosaur Peak. Now, Surprise of Dinosaur Peak is in fact a direct sequel to The Rescue of Dino and Hoppy. The game is really, really well done. Although, um, there are a couple things that make you look at it and just say, hmm. And one of them is the fact that Gazoo, who helped you mightily in the first game, says that because of because of the lava he can't use his abilities to assist you to get your kids from the other side of this lava flow to you know to bring them home um but what you do get in return is a barney rubble and don't get it twisted barney barney's a big help here he can um, he can hang from vines and stuff. He can shimmy along ropes and vines and all that. And he has a projectile attack. Fred has a club, um, and his club packs more of a punch than Barney's slingshot. But it's you know it's shorter range. Fred can also dangle from uh, from the edges of cliffs and pull himself up. So that's useful, and that's really, really helpful. Also, this game is really interesting because they're, in addition to the platforming stages that pop up throughout this game, there are a bunch of little, um, there, are, there are a couple of, I'm saying a bunch, but there are mini games between some of the levels. Um, remember that hockey thing from the first game? It's back. Um, the basketball thing is back. In addition, there is a surfing level and there's a shmup level, which, you know, me being me, I was really excited about that. Um, the game is really, really, it's a really well done video game. Taito did a good job here. And so, yeah, the fact that it didn't really, uh, it really didn't get a lot of burn because it was a rental store game, it, you know, it's, it's a bit of a, it's a shame. Um, there are a lot worse games that could have been rental store games, but rental store exclusives rather. And yeah, this one should have gotten a retail release it would have moved units even though it was so late in the NES life cycle. Um, also, another interesting little quirk in this game is that when you're playing through the game, you collect stars. 
over the course of a level you collect it over, well over the course of the game you collect enough stars to spell out the word yabba dabba do you get an extra life so that's that's something kind of interesting in here as well a little bit of extra extra fan service on top of some fan service you did but this is a good game don't sleep on it at all but um be mindful of how you're going to get yourself a way to play it because if you decide you want a copy of the of the surprise at dinosaur peak so repro carts oh you can get a repro card about you know 30 40 dollars and i absolutely recommend that because unless you are a hardcore collector this this ain't it um, the cheapest price I saw a loose cart copy of this go for $1,225. That is $1,225 for a loose cart. Um, I told y'all we about to get into uh, we about to get into mortgage payment prices for some of these some of these cartridges, and this one. This is a good game. Um, all of them, at least one of these, won't be really worth that. It's just a matter of the label. So, I hope you're ready. But this has been the 8-Bit Animal. And I'll catch you beautiful people tomorrow. Tomorrow, how much is a name worth? Well, if you were named by Bandai in 1987, somewhere between eleven and fifteen thousand dollars.